As you can tell from this young Hampshire farmer, there's a war going on here with local pests. Armed with a silenced shotgun, though he is, Tom's shock troops consist of our old friend Jamie Chandler, the air gunner born without hands who doesn't let that get in the way of a great day out. We start with the promise of decoying. Tom is complaining about pigeons and has the perfect place for Jamie to set out his decoys. We'll probably go the other side of this wood. There's yep. a, a little strip of wild bird cover that's growing, starting to grow. So I think if we sit in the wood, put some decoys just out under a tree maybe, because they love these woods, the pigeons, and yeah. uh, should be able to pick some off from there. Cracking, brilliant. Oh. A quick zero later and we're ready to set up. This guy got here before us, but he's not been doing his job, so it is out with the hide poles and up with the hide. Because it's got a pointed end, we'll uh, cut an angle like that. It seems to just screw its way in. So, that's my tip, twist it. Twist it and put force down and you'll eventually just... More screw it. funny, funny boys. As for decoy patterns, Jamie's philosophy is clear. Just like a shotgun pattern, if it doesn't work, change it. I always use a traditional horseshoe, but I tend to put the full body at the front, the half shells at the back, and just get as many out there as I can. Then we sit and wait, and wait, and wait. The gamekeeper has forgotten we're here and drives through, but that doesn't put off the birds. There are no birds. The spotting scope picks up a magpie and a crow, but they're hundreds of yards away. Jamie doesn't get a single shot. Despite all the planning, the birds are not here today. Tom reckons he might have been too quick to sack the scarecrow. The scarecrows are invaluable, actually. It's such old technology, but it just works. It really did work. But, as with everything else, they get used to it after a while. It's time to change tactics. From the other side of the wood where we parked, we can see the cattle trough on the next door farm, and it is heaving with corvids. Again, it takes the spotting scope to see them. Yep, there is dozens, by the looks of things, of crows coming in over on the... just by the rubble thing over there. You know, black feathers, they're going to be, they're going to be hot, aren't they? I've got a couple so of... keep coming back to that water trough. So the plan is, if we go up this road, yep. yeah, and is there somewhere we can park behind the hardcore? Yes. And then sneak up onto the top of it. We drive on down to the yard. The problem with this stalk is it's going to put Jamie out into the open, and these birds are sensibly wary. Jamie eases himself into a position with a view of the water butt. At first, the only creatures that come near him are the livestock. Birds pour past, but they know to avoid him. Then an unlucky pigeon comes too close. The water providing that kind of Serengeti go to the waterhole type atmosphere. And it proved successful. That was a, a cracking shot and I'm um, really happy to have made it. The corvids are still around, so next tactic is to stalk the farmyard itself. As hunters Vermin and others show in their films, farm buildings make great cover for air gunners. It's also a chance for Tom to prove that a silenced shotgun is just as good as an air gun. So does that disturb the cattle as much as a normal shotgun? No, not nearly as much as a normal one would. I mean, you wouldn't want to use it too close, mm. but no, because you've got less of that boom, you've got a lot of less echo. Yeah. And that's what would frighten the cattle more than anything. They're used to loud noises with the tractors banging away and everything, but it's that boom that they really don't like. And this just reduces that, making it more farmyard friendly. First blood, however, goes to the air gun. We round a corner and there is a young bird not quick enough to react to our presence, giving Jamie plenty of time to get onto it. It's gone. Well, Tom just pointed that rook out, which has just come into the end of the muck heap, uh, where they've raked it out. And just, uh, what was that, 25, 30 yards? When was the last time you saw a rook with its back to you 30 yards away? It just doesn't happen, but this is a great thing about air guns. You can be opportunistic. Um, you'd never try a shotgun around a barn like this because you frighten the livestock, but we can do that with an air gun and nothing's disturbed. The best chances are around the corners of the barns and the bales. Unfortunately, that's a miss. And so is that. They are at the extremes of range here. Tom, at last, gets a go with his silenced shotgun. And he knows who to blame when the bird flies on. Well, I missed. Because <laughs> I was waiting for the cameraman to turn his camera on. <laughs> but no, to be honest, I... I where it was going so slowly, I didn't anticipate much lead and it probably was going faster than I thought it was, to be honest. I hit that! <laughs> How did that happen? Oh, that's brilliant. This is not fun, I don't like it. 
more misses than a girls' school. There's only one thing for it. This, it is designed for scaring birds off of crop. It's essentially a firework or a rocket without the pretty sparks. Hell of a bang to it, incredibly effective actually. Yeah, really good little bit of kit. But in the summer, also if you're out shooting, you want to move the birds a little bit. Light blue touch paper and stand well clear. Why is the touch paper always light blue?